Hello, my Bill 5000 Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another Watcher. This one is titled, Are You Scared of Sleepwalking? Now, I asked if they were still doing the Are You Scared series, and I was told by many of you that they are. I See, I love Watcher. I do. I, I've liked Ryan and Shane since they was on BuzzFeed. I, I just wasn't allowed to do a lot of buzz reactions to BuzzFeed because a few of them I can put up. I, I don't care to have, you know, the copyright and not get any revenue for it. That, that, that don't bother me. But it, it got to the point where I just couldn't post them because it, it would have been like an actual copyright strike. And it's like, eh, no, I, no, I ain't fucking with that shit. Washer, uh, you know, you still don't get to monetize it. So, you know. But I really enjoy them. I, I enjoy watching about everything they have. I, I even watch them uh, play the scary games and shit. So I'm very glad that they are still doing the Are You Scared series. Like, I love I love just being told scary stories, even if they're just not real at all in any way. They, just the way they tell them, it just enthralls you. Like, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So I am very excited. Let's go ahead and get into today's story. Go ahead. Turn them lights down low. Put on something comfy. Come up with something special. Let's get spooky. Yeah, sleepwalking scary enough as it is. Oh, God. I, I, I do slightly sleepwalk. It's It's not bad. I just, I get up and just do little random things and go back to bed. It, it's, it's scary though. This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. No one really knows why people sleepwalk. It was once thought people were acting on autopilot or the subconscious mind. The paranoia being you're acting out your truest self. But what if your true self Ooh. is darker or violent? For our narrator, Ooh. he's about to meet his boyfriend, perhaps for the first time. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A oh. show where I tell my friend Shane Madej the internet's scariest stories that may or may not be true. Now I have not read this story before and neither has Shane. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. My boyfriend used to sleepwalk. Used to. Before we jump into today's story, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. As you will gather from watching this show, safety and security are two very important aspects. Most internet users aren't even aware of the amount of surveillance, limitation, and data mining done with their personal information on a daily basis. Surfshark VPN can get rid of all these problems for you with an easy to use one for all solution. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. Use promo code WATCHER to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk. The link is in the description for the episode so check that out after the episode. Now back to Are You Scared? I never technically broke up with my last boyfriend. I don't know why that's the thing I keep coming back to after everything that happened, but it really does bug me. Maybe it's just a closure thing. Maybe it's like knocking on wood or avoiding the phrase, what could possibly go wrong? Little things we do to make ourselves feel safe, even if they don't really protect us. I don't know where that boyfriend is now. I can't decide if that's worse or better than knowing. It started out fine. We met through a mutual friend who ran a monthly video game night at a gay bar downtown. I wouldn't say we hit it off right away, but we liked each other. And so we kept hanging out until we decided to start calling our hangouts dates. And Aww. then we were dating. He seemed like a pretty cool guy. We were together for a couple of years. It's so sweet. <laughs> oh, it's going to end up horrible years before I asked him to move in with me. 
We lived together for another year after that before things started going really wrong. Something is amiss because uh, it sounds like they were together for a very long time. So the fact that there's no solid breakup here is a little concerning. Obviously things went south, but in terms of why that could have happened, it doesn't seem like rushing into it was a thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously the only thing that could cause that is a very, very bad set of circumstances where it's like, no time for formalities. I'm just never going to see you again. What occasion oh, could damn. call for no time for formalities? Now my brain is running fucking wild. Oh shit. Maladies besides like the witness protection program or something like that. If someone really does someone dirt. Maybe. Okay, this would make me just up and dip. Maybe. They both like pickles. And they buy the big jars of the whole pickles and they just cut them up for whatever they need. You know, it's easier that way. I have a large family. We do the same thing. I, I, we get them, we cut them up, put them on sandwiches, you know, whatever. We, I love pickles, and I'll just go in there and get one. Maybe while he was sleepwalking, he would go in there <laughs> and just randomly take a pickle out of the pickle jar and put it in his butt, then take it back out, put it back in the jar, and then go back to bed. And then the boyfriend realized a year of eating this these pickles he was really eating butt pickles i'd leave someone and i wouldn't even say a word i wouldn't even pack my clothes i would just walk out the door if that happened i'd give him an irish goodbye bro dirty hmm. maybe they're just like that's it you don't deserve it i'm out of here you ever done someone dirty no you dirty dog i'm not a dirty dog i'm a clean dog i'm a clean kitty baby I don't like that. Oh, neither. Up to that point, it hadn't been perfect, obviously. We had our disagreements and childish moments and communication breakdowns. All the stuff that people who get to- Oh, I got to see the trailer for uh, Mystery Files is getting ready to come out. It looks like I can't wait, bro. I'm excited as shit. Date and their teens have worked through by the time they have their own apartments. We didn't really talk about our relationship issues with anybody. But, like I said, for the first few years, it wasn't that much of a problem. We'd just gotten into the habit of putting on a perfect face for the outside world. I'd gotten into the habit of never talking about anything weird or unpleasant my boyfriend did. So, I didn't tell anybody when he started sleepwalking. Now we're starting to get into some ominous foreshadowing here. I don't fuck with that. I don't, I don't enjoy sleepwalkers. They're freaky. Yes, yes. I don't like them. Have you ever sleepwalked in your life? I don't think I have. I knew one of my friends growing up, he would sleepwalk, and this is, you're gonna love this. This will terrify Oh yeah, you. yeah, what is this? He would, as a child, go to the front door because he thought someone was there and he would open it and he would talk to no one. Isn't that, that's no good. If that's I had a crazy. kid like that, I'd, I'd be sending Send him away. It's like, I'm sorry, baby, but that son of a bitch gotta go back where he came from. Like, I don't even know. The first time it happened, it was more surreal than anything. I woke up in the middle of the night to this weird rhythmic clicking noise. It was so regular that at first, I thought it was just my watch on the nightstand. But then I noticed my boyfriend wasn't in bed with me. The bathroom in uh. our apartment adjoins directly to the bedroom. So I could see that he wasn't in there either. The clicking noise was coming from outside the bedroom. I'm imagining him playing the spoons. Just a little. Or he's out there doing Morse code. <laughs> I figured it was something the neighbors were doing, or maybe my boyfriend was having a midnight snack. But it kept going. It kept going, and he didn't come back for so long that eventually I got nervous and went to find him. He was standing at the door to the apartment, trying to open it. He turned the doorknob, tugged the door back against the deadbolt, and then turned the doorknob back to center. Turn, pull, turn back just like that, over and over and over. That's not and too he bad. Was definitely asleep. You could just kind of tell that there wasn't anything going on in there. I tried, I really tried not to be freaked out about it. Are you creeped out by this? Cause I'm pretty fucking creeped out by this, by the way. I'm creeped out, but I'd probably, I feel like immediately I'd be like, hey, what are you doing? Back when I used to live with my ex-girlfriend, one night she woke up, or I thought she had woken up and she, got up on the bed, 
like stood up on top of the mattress that I was also sleeping on. And I was like, what are you, mm -hmm. what are you doing? And I looked up and she started doing 360s. She started just spinning around doing 360s on the bed. And I was just like, if this is a bit, I'm not getting it. And then she hopped off the bed and then walked very fast and stiffly over to the bathroom. And I was just like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll follow her. Cause I was fully awake at this point. Cause I was alarmed. I walked into the bathroom. Her face was just facing the corner of the bathroom, kind of like Blair Witch. And I said, uh, hello. And I said her name and she didn't turn around. <laughs> and so, oh, uh, hello there. <laughs> and so what I did was I slowly approached her just like in the movies and I grabbed her shoulder and she didn't yeah. like jolt at me like a zombie. She just kind of like opened her eyes and was just like, why am I in the bathroom? To this day, it still creeps me out. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, never happened again. I mean, again. To, be, to be fair, um, she was a freaky lady, man. <laughs> <laughs> she, was a, she was a nice lady. I knew enough about sleepwalking to know that this is kind of how it goes. People just get stuck in these little loops. <laughs> and eventually, they either go That's back great. to bed it or they wake up. Lady, bro. It was just that I had no idea what could have changed to make <laughs> him start sleepwalking. As far oh, as damn. I knew, nothing was any different than it had been for the past three years. I kind of snuck over to him because I was freaked out, as much as I was trying not to be. He didn't react to me, didn't wake up, didn't change his rhythm or trying to open the door. I was as gentle as I could be about trying to wake him up just reached down and put a hand on his shoulder. The second I touched him, he stopped dead, like somebody had hit pause on a remote control somewhere. He still didn't wake up, but he didn't look at me. He just stopped. I tried talking to him and shaking him a little, but he stayed frozen still. Eventually, I had to pry his hand off the doorknob and walk him back to bed. Once I had him lying down, though, he went right back to sleep. I did it. I stayed up watching him until dawn. I always hate it when people are like, oh, you gotta be gentle with them. I'd be like is that a splashing thing? water in this guy's face. So your reaction to that is to startle them with ice cold water? Ice cold water? A broom? A broom? <laughs> or turn on a vacuum? That scares my cat sometimes if my cat's being... Actually, that would be kind of funny if you put like the tube on their nose and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just put the tube on their nutsack or something. Now that's crazy you were making fun of me and now you say put a, a vacuum tube to the nuts we were already in cartoon territory you put us there you mentioned hitting them with a broomstick i feel you like did. that could cause you did. some serious damage i don't know if it would cause serious damage what it would cause is a hilarious noise <laughs> <laughs> I did talk to him about it, let him know what had happened, asked him if he knew anything that could have caused it. He didn't, and he didn't seem that worried about it either. Oh, shit. I asked if he'd go see a great. doctor if it kept happening, and he said he'd only go if it got to be a problem. If it was just a weird thing that happened sometimes and it wasn't hurting anybody, he didn't see any reason to waste the time and money on trying to fix it. Right. So we just kind of let it drop. And it did keep happening. <laughs> It wasn't any kind of regular, and it's hard to say now how often it happened. I want to say two or three times a month, but because it was random, it's hard to really remember. If I did that once, and my significant other was like, Go to the doctor. You better go to a doctor. I'd be like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, I mean, it's like not a problem at that point. Yeah, I freaked you out a little bit, but I mean, like, there's no reason to bring somebody with a stethoscope in here. If it happens 15 times, just 15, then you go to 14? the doctor. And is 15 the cutoff? For me, yes, if it happens 15 times, I'm going to the doctor. Or if I murder someone, go to the doctor. It Bear. got to be more annoying than anything. Bear. A few times a month, I would wake up in the middle of the night. Uh, where did where 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 did we hear that story about the the fucking cop? Like went somewhere to help this other police station and he ended up like shooting someone on the beach while he was asleep. Like they even did like a study on it and everything. And like they end up putting him like on a farm or some shit and like guards would bring him food. It was crazy. And my boyfriend would be standing at the front door trying to open it. And I would have to go get him and bring him back to bed. I couldn't really leave him to it. The clicking. What would happen if you let him go out the door? Just one night, just stay up, wait for him to get up, go in there, unlock the door that way, and then follow him. Maybe he's going to lead you to a treasure.
Like Weekend at Bernie style, you know what I mean, bro? The noise was just loud enough and just grating enough that it made it impossible for me to get back to sleep once it had started. I'd guess this went on for about four or five months. I love Weekend at but Bernie's. I wasn't really keeping track. I do remember that it was summer when things finally got out of hand. It was pretty close to my birthday, which is in August. I don't remember what we were doing the day before. As far as I know, it was a completely You're ordinary, crazy. unremarkable day. I just remember waking up in the middle of the night and thinking how quiet it was. It would have made sense to go right back to sleep, but something felt wrong. That kind of thing where the instinct part of your brain has picked up on something, but the thinking parts haven't managed to put together what it is yet. The longer I lay there trying to go back to sleep, the worse I felt. I always hate it when these guys do this in these stories when they're describing their fear. It's not. <laughs> Is it because someone's fear. describing their feelings? It's just always that they're always <laughs> trying to really sell you on their fear. They're like, "What is this fear that they speak of? I don't understand." I once met a grizzly bear. Remember that guy from that other story? Yeah, I met a big scary grizzly we're, bear. We're not going to get I into remember this, how this, scared this, I was. Yeah, because it's the scariest. And sometimes predator I was that scared in other places. I think you just don't uh, understand what fear is. I know what fear is, baby. Okay, if you know what fear is, describe fear to me. Your uh, butthole clenches. Yep. There. I started to exactly. get sweaty and then nauseous. And then I was just lying there wide awake, hopped up on adrenaline and completely certain that something was going to try and kill me. My boyfriend wasn't in the bed with me, but I didn't hear the clicking. So he wasn't trying to open the door either. I knew he was still in the room with me, not moving, not making any noise, but I knew. I felt him. Something in the instinct part I don't of like my that. brain told me not to move or make. I don't like that at all. I hate, I hate not knowing if someone's there or not, but feeling someone there like it's, it's one of the creepiest fucking things ever, bro. Make any noise? It took another long, long slice of time to figure out why. On the wall across from the bed, the wall I was facing, something was casting a reflection that wasn't usually there. It was just a sliver of reflected streetlight. Right or wrong, my brain latched onto that as a sure sign that I was about to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you sure. go. Frankly, one of the advantages of having a smart wow. mom because you could just like, Google, okay, Google turn, turn on, on the lights. lights. Yeah, I do have that hooked up in my bedroom, and it's fucking so good. This is not sponsored by Google, just like that other episode no, was not, not sponsored by Schlage. Yeah, use a different brand. We don't care. Just use regular bulbs <laughs> and have a butler. I decided I had to look and see what was behind me. It had to be my boyfriend, just my boyfriend. Though I had no idea what could have been casting that reflection. He wouldn't have put on his glasses if he was sleepwalking. And if he wasn't sleepwalking, I couldn't think of a reason why he'd be standing over the bed in complete silence for however many minutes or hours he'd been there. As soon as I made the first slightest shift to roll over, the reflection zipped up the wall and disappeared. I froze again, on the edge of having a heart attack. Nothing else moved. Nothing made any sound. The reflection didn't come back. I wasn't nearly rolled over enough to see what was behind me. I couldn't move anymore. Even if I'd wanted to, I just couldn't. I think I must have stayed Fuck like that. that, frozen exactly where I was for a couple of hours, at least. The arm I was lying on top of went completely to sleep. I got a crick in my neck so bad it almost made me cry. There was a spring in the mattress digging into my hip that I would have sworn drew blood. Oh man, by the way, this has happened to me on an Unsolved shoot. Fucking stupid. Um, or I swore there was something in the room with me or something looking at me and I just thought I got to stay completely still. <laughs> yeah. So so this thing doesn't notice me and I've definitely frozen in an uncomfortable position for probably 30 minutes. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but I, I've done this before. Not maybe an these couple are like, hours. These are, these are T-Rex rules? I think it's the idea that, well, this thing hasn't confronted me yet. So let's continue sure. doing what's working right now. Finally, Makes sense. I heard movement. The reflection came back down the wall, just a flicker, and disappeared again. My boyfriend walked out of the room. A couple seconds later, 
The clicking of him trying to open the door started up again. I counted a hundred clicks before I turned over. I was alone in the room. I waited another hundred clicks before I got up out of bed. I could barely move. I was painfully sore from lying completely still for who knows how long. I peeked out of the bedroom towards the front door. My boyfriend was there. The hand that wasn't turning the doorknob was holding a kitchen knife. I got back in bed. I didn't sleep. This is taking a, a hard left here, and my worst fear has been confirmed here. This dude is going crazy. Right. What I'm saying that's when you get either Fuck the that. water or the vacuum. I don't know if I want to throw water or startle somebody with a knife, though. Because, like, what if he just, like, I mean, wakes up and, like, fucking goes John Wick with it and just throws it at me? I mean, yeah, you know, can't be doing that. Lock him up. <laughs> get some safety locks or something. I guess so. Certainly a conversation to be had over breakfast on this one. In the morning, I told him what had happened. He agreed that it was scary, and we made an appointment with his GP to bring it up. I was pretty shaken up, so as much as it was a coward's move, I decided to stay with a friend until we could figure out what was going on. He wasn't happy about it and tried to convince me not to, but I really genuinely couldn't stay. He didn't get violent or anything, but he also didn't really seem to understand why I was so freaked out. Oh, you don't trust me when my brain turns off and I walk around with a murder tool? Yeah, he promised that's... he wouldn't hurt me. I said, I mean, I get it. Like the dude's like, look, I, I ain't able to control. This is just happening. And the other motherfucker, she's like, I don't give a shit. You try to stab me in my booty. Fuck you, bruh. I don't know if it's up to you whether or not you hurt me. He asked who else it would be up to, and I just said, I don't know. He didn't like it, but he let it go. Even if he didn't understand why I was scared, he could tell that I was scared. And at the end of the day, he tried to respect that. So I went to stay with a friend, and he stayed at my apartment. Neither of us wanted anybody else to find out what was going on, or how long we'd kept it a secret already. His doctor's appointment was only about a week out, so it was pretty unlikely he'd even have another sleepwalking episode before it came around. I made him promise to lock the doors every night before he went to bed anyway, and to text me to let me know he'd done it. And he did do it. I still have the text message. I can't think of any reason why he would have lied. But in the morning, he was gone anyway. I came by around eight, before it was supposed to get really swelteringly hot just to check in and make sure he was okay. The door was unlocked when I got there. I didn't panic or even really freak out. It was kind of like finding that an old, old pet had finally died while you were out. It was just this kind of sinking dread, this certainty, the guilt of a loss that you expected and couldn't stop. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like when a pet dies, eh, you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter because they're old, you know? Hey, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was missing no signs of a struggle or a break-in. His glasses were sitting on his nightstand. His phone was still there, still plugged into its charger. His clothes for the day were laid out. All his shoes were still on the shoe rack. His keys were on the key hook by the door. Even the kitchen knife was still in its knife block. But my boyfriend was gone. I called up my friend who I was staying with and we went to the police station to report him as missing. They were pretty unhelpful pretty dismissive, but I mostly just wanted to cover all my bases. We spread it around Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and every other social media site anybody in our friend group or our families had an account on. Damn. His family hired a private investigator to try and find him. I did everything I could to help, including eventually talking about his sleepwalking. I have an idea of how this could end, and it's probably not going to go this way, but I think it's a good ending and I want to pitch it. Hit me. He gets there can't find his boyfriend oh no where is he i can't find him oh yeah, no yeah. he's gone where is he yeah. looking everywhere turning the apartment inside out yeah. emptying all the he's drawers looking, for him. Uh, looking in the closet um okay, looking in the shed he's really thoroughly um, looking for him yes he sits down in a big comfy chair and he's sitting there going where oh where could he be he looks over he catches uh oh maybe a reflection uh, a glimmer of sunlight dances across the mantle and he mm -hmm. sees a snow globe and he thinks, I don't remember that being there. He walks up to the snow globe. He sees a little tiny version of his boyfriend. He looks scared, as if saying, help me. The end? Question mark. 
Does anybody else have any other pitches for the ending of the story? Let's just stay with the end then, huh? Okay, cool. Okay, well, that's good though. Yeah. Or maybe he's a, a Lego. Globe the whole time. He was, oh, what he if was he's a Lego? Lego. Wow. Is that better? What if he was a Lego? That's crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, what if he was a Lego? Yeah. <laughs> It's been about four years since he disappeared. Oh, Nobody's found any sign of him, not even a body. I've moved apartments twice, changed my phone number, bought a lockbox to keep all my cooking knives in. I still sometimes wake up in a cold sweat. Certain, I just heard somebody rattling the door. So, are you scared? No, not really. All right, so boyfriend ghosted him, I guess. <laughs> I guess, or, yeah, I mean... That's, a, that's better Howard. than the boyfriend turning into a Lego? Let's find out if the story is real. How about that? Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I mean... Looks like this story probably. is imagined by S.J. Ralston, submitted to us for this show. So, a fake one. A fictional one. Not real. But Could have been better. Sure read real. I mean, I, I do appreciate how much this read like a true story. I'll say this. Coods for the restraint. Coods for the restraint. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it takes yes. restraint. You can learn a thing or two from that. It was a fun tale. It was uh, gripping. So I respect it. I respect uh, it. I'd say 10 out of 10 slam dunk. I'm pleased. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, you yes. got the slam dunk from Shane Medane. That doesn't happen often. Yeah, I don't hand out dunker. I only hand out one dunker every season. And there it is. Well, that does right it for here. this story. We'll see you next time. Good night. Bye. Oh, I love this shit. I can't believe that was made up i really thought that would be real like that sound really fucking plausible damn he did show a lot of restraint i enjoyed that i really enjoyed today's video if y'all enjoyed today's video as much as i did please go down there and leave a thumbs up while you're down there going over smack that subscribe button become part of the bill for a thousand nation we do some crazy shit here, bro. If you want to know when that crazy shit happens ding that bell it might work for you it might not if it do though Jump in on one of the premieres, get over in the live chat, be like, hey, bro, I got dinged. I got the dang so good. Leave a like and dip, and that's all you got to do. As always, be good on one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. You know, they probably would have found his boyfriend if he'd just been wearing some Bill for a Thousand merch. He must not have knew. The link is in the description. But now you do.